Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today on this video, we're going to tear into a John Deere 8310R with a 9 liter that has a uh, front crankshaft dampener that has failed and it's went in and chewed up the timing cover and now it's leaking oil. So um, I looked at this tractor out in the field, had it well at a customer's shop and we had it hauled back to our shop and we're going to tear into it on this video. Um, I just got back from vacation. Um, went up to Laramie, Wyoming, so I could be inducted in the WyoTech Hall of Fame. Um, it was a really good trip, and I'm going to put some of the uh, the content from that trip at the end of this video. So if you guys want to watch and see me get inducted into the WyoTech Hall of Fame, um, it'll be at the end of this video. And I want to thank WyoTech for everything. The trip was amazing. Um, shout out to all my fellow uh, inductees into the hall of fame you guys are really awesome to hang out with um, it was an honor to be inducted with you guys um, and it was an honor to be inducted with jesse combs and it was uh, really awesome to hang out with her family and get to know them and um, at the end of the the ceremony the next day we had a, a wyotech car show and it was an amazing car show. There was some awesome rides there. And uh, I'm going to try to put some of those pictures in there for you guys to see. But uh, make sure you guys check out my Amazon storefront. If you guys like to buy some of the tools that I use on the channel, I got a bunch of them on there um, that you guys can look at and buy through my Amazon storefront. So I'll put a link down in the description below. Also check out my, my merch store. Um, I got some new t-shirt designs and some stickers and some stuff um, that I think you guys would like if you want to represent uh, the channel and help support the channel. I appreciate you guys um, going down to the, the link in the description and checking out the merch store. But that's enough of that for now. Let's get into this project. Okay, well here it is. You see the oil leak coming down the side here. But when you look inside here, you can see that that dampener is separated, slid back, and is eating through the auxiliary drive cover. See there's metal on top of the ILS accumulator there? Yeah. So, I'm gonna have to take off Fan drive, fan driven bracket, shield on the other side, coolant tank's got to come off. Um, basically everything on the front here has got to come off the engine. And then we'll get into the dampener here and that auxiliary drive cover and we'll see um, what exactly we need to do to repair that. So I got the, the block drain open, drain the coolant down because I got to come over here got to get the coolant tank off because it's got to come off in order for this um, inner fan shield to come out we'll have to take this uh, after cooler pipe off this shield off so we're going to get into that Okay, so once you get the coolant tank, the after cooler pipe, and well, the, the intake pipe, I guess, for the, the throttle valve, and then the, uh, there's, a, there's a rod that goes from here to right here, you get that out. Then you can get that big shield out of there. And then here's what we're left with. So next, we're going to have to um, I'll take these bolts out here, separate this pipe. I'll just kind of strap it over out of the way. Um, then I'm going to take this pipe, probably take it off up here and just get it out of my way. Because um, we got to get in, we got to take the fan driven off, the fan drive, and then this water pump cover 
has got to come off next. So once we got pretty much everything done on that side that I want to get done, um, now we're going to um, work on removing the fan, the fan belt, the fan drive, and the fan driven. So there's six 13s you got to take off this outer shiv on the fan drive. Take the shiv off. Now we're going to take off the, the 13 millimeter nuts for the fan. Okay. Now we can get the fan off. belt out. I'm going to check the fan drive bushings here and they're worn so we're going to look into that. Right. So now I'm going to remove this fan drive. Um, we're going to remove, we're going to unbolt this and get this shield and this ether can and this wiring out of the way so we can get to the bolts back here that hold this drive on. Once you get that off, then I'm going to need to release the hydraulic pressure off this or I'm going to miss. All right, so back here is your fan drive control valve. Take a 5 8 wrench. Bust the, the jam nut loose. And you turn half inch, turn the, the bleed screw. bleed screw out. Now we can force this shift back and retract all the oil out of the pistons. So now we'll take the hydraulic pressure line off. Okay. And we'll take all the 15s out back here. Hold the fan drive in. Pull the fan drive out. All right, we're getting closer. So next step was we're gonna get the fan driven assembly out of here. Disconnect the speed sensor and then we got four 15s and then we'll pop that guy out of there and then we're gonna be taking this cover off which is also the water pump inlet and cover as well. Okay. One more bolt and this fan driven's out. Now you gotta get a firm grip on this thing. Cause it ain't light. Yep. All right, so now we'll take the sensor off. We'll take this line off lower radiator hose and then we'll get the bolts off for this cover. She's leaking. Probably going to have to drain the radiator down a little bit. I just drained the block so this will drain the radiator too, I guess. Might as well. It's draining down. Oh, 
corn pods. This thing's been on there a minute. These gear inch picks, I really like that. These work really well. Why? You spin. Oh. My goodness. <sighs> that fought me tooth and nail. <clears throat> Try to get all the bolts out for this cover. getting there now we're going to take these allens out here and take the front dampener off and cleaned out the allens and lubed it because these usually fit pretty tight and they're really tight Ooh, that one too bad oh sorry i bumped you guys And then we just ease her off. Yeah, I think we can wiggle that off. Get up, come up. There. So you can see here on this dampener, see this slip right here? That's not supposed to be there. This is supposed to be out flush here. And I've got another dampener sitting on the bench that is like that and we'll be able to see the difference. But now I'm gonna take these bolts out and get this dampener off the hub. Why is it not coming from up there? You got it? Mm -hmm. So that hub didn't move. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got the rubber dampener off. All that's left is the, the crank hub, but we're gonna have to take that off to get this auxiliary drive cover. But luckily, it only ain't the auxiliary drive cover. Man, did it do a number on that guy. And I think it's actually cracked. Yeah, right here. I can feel maybe a crack right there that's where the oil's coming out of but check out this dampener so here's a known good dampener we pull off an 8400r it's flush that is a half inch down so the rubber just came off the metal here and it went down and then it rubbed. See where it'd been rubbing. See where that's all coming apart. So that's something that happens with these rubber dampeners if you don't replace them. Um, Normally, they last a little bit longer than this one did. Um, normally change them at 4,000 hours. You know, the service center was 4,500. So um, this one still had 1,000 hours to go before you change it. So not really sure why this one failed prematurely, but it did. So now we're just going to have to fix it and make it like new again. Okay. Now I've got a, a T-bar puller 
on this crank hub, but we have to heat it with a torch to loosen the Loctite that is on there. You will not get that sucker off unless you heat it with a torch, so let's play with some fire. Nailed it. Pop goes the weasel. So I had just a little bit of pressure on that. So I wasn't sitting here heating it longer than necessary. So I knew as soon as I hit the magic number that, you know, melted that Loctite, she would just go pop like that. But, you know, scares you every time, every time. There we go. See, that's not on very far. Is this a short little tapered nose? Look at that Loctite. There's a lot of it on there. So you gotta heat that up. Yeah, literally, that's what all it holds it on is a taper Loctite and that bolt. No keyway, nothing. Pretty wild, huh? Right. So there's one Torx bolt right here, T45. And it's not very long and not very tight. The rest are just 15s. Now I can get this cover off. Come on. Uh, there we go. And there's your auxiliary drive gear. It's got a, a bearing. And this hub stays put. You want to make sure that these bolts don't come loose on you. I've had that uh, had this one break off before. That's exciting. Lovely. Over here I got a new auxiliary drive cover but so you can't get this part number anymore and you notice it's got these raised parts in it and here's a new cover. They got those milled off and then have a larger area here milled out because this is supposed to fit the new style auxiliary drive gear, which is thicker. And you also have to replace the, the timing cover to fit that new thicker gear. Well, I thought, well, let's try to use this new style cover and see if it fits. And I put it up there and it mates flush and it looks like it's going to work okay. So I think we dodged a bullet there. Um, this one, you can see there's a crack right here and that's where that torx bolt that big torx bolt goes it's cracked through the cover and you can see that crack right there and that's where it was leaking oil but man did it rub the crap out of that so we're going to pitch that guy we're going to use this one here so now I've got to get all this oily mess cleaned up. Um, I'm going to replace this front crank seal, put a new one of those in there, and then we can uh, put a new gasket on, new auxiliary drive cover, and replace the water pump seals. So this tractor has had uh, a water pump replaced in it uh, recently. I need to look and see how many hours ago it was, but I, I'm the one that put that in. It ain't been in there super long, so we usually run those water pumps uh, 3,000 hours, so we're definitely not within that range. But I'll talk to the customer and see what he wants to do. I mean, it's right there. Now's the time to change it if he wants to do it again, but 
I'm saying it's probably just fine to leave that in there for now and get this all back together. Okay, so I got the timing cover cleaned up pretty well. I use a citrol and then I, I spray it all down. I let it sit for five minutes, soak, and then I take some solvent and a brush and brush it all in real good. And then I just spray brake clean, brake clean it off. It's good enough for now. Once I get all this back together, I'm gonna power wash the thing really good. Um, so right now I'm gonna take a little eighth inch drill bit and I'm gonna drill through this seal and then we're gonna screw in a little screw and a slide hammer and hopefully we can slide hammer that seal out. Just try to get it about. You wanna make sure you don't drill into the crank. That's no bueno. There we go. Here's my slide hammer tool. Uh oh. That's not cool. So I have to. See what happens. Oh, just started to move. Whacked the crap out of my light. That was cool. Let's drill one at the bottom. You little booger. It's moving a little bit. That sucker's in there. Why? I'm about slide hammered out. I don't know how many more slide hammer wax I got. I've done about 1,200 already. Guess it's just gonna come out in pieces. Holy crap. Man, oh man. I haven't ever had one come out that violent. Look at that. Whew. Dumb. Okay, so I got the, the seal bore all cleaned out. It took some memory cloth to clean the around the timing cover. There was a like a rust ridge on the outside of that timing cover. And what I was fighting was the, the outside of the seal on this timing cover was stuck because that rust ridge, the, uh, the inner uh, wear sleeve was loose 
on the crankshaft. I got it broke loose. It You could move it, but this piece was just stuck like you would not believe. So pretty much ruined my elbow today, slide hammering on that guy, but finally got it out. But now that I got the, you know, the crankshaft and the timing cover cleaned up with the hammering cloth, then I installed this um, sleeve and it fits just so on the taper of the, the crankshaft nose. And you run this screw all the way in and you take a little bit of clean engine oil and wipe it around the outside and inside of the seal to help uh, lubricate to install it. And then we're gonna take this driver here and slip it on over this like a dat. And then we're gonna run uh, a nut on here and we'll tighten the nut until this um, driver bottoms out on that sleeve and then that crankshaft seal will be installed to the correct depth. Good close. And there you go, new front main seal installed. I'm gonna install the auxiliary drive cover. The new gasket. Loctite 242 in there. Blue, medium strength. Oh, it fits. It fits, right? Yeah. I don't know, I don't see any problems with it. It doesn't hit enough, it's got extra cutouts. I mean, so there's more clearance, but it, it works. So it's going on. I got the, the front seal in place. Boy, did that thing fight me. My God, that thing bounced. My elbows are smoked. First thing this morning, destroyed my elbows with the slide hammer. <laughs> Just done. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Torque this to 55 foot pounds in sequence here. Okay. 221 inch pounds on the T45 torque screw. Okay. All right, now the next step is I got to lock the crankshaft up. So we're going to put this flywheel lock in there. I took this fuel filter off and it slides in the, in the hole here. And I had to take the two big bolts that hold this shield on so I could get that, that flywheel lock tool fully seated into the flywheel because it was hitting on this so I had to take those bolts out so I could run that in because this front dampener the well the hub that we got to put on there um, we're going to put Loctite 680 retaining compound on that crankshaft nose and then we're gonna install the hub and then we got to torque that crank bolt to 355 foot pounds and we don't want the crankshaft turning so we can hit that torque okay now we're gonna apply the loctite 680 I'm gonna put it on the hub too, a little bit. 
Make sure there's no residual Loctite in your hub. Put that on there real good. We'll slide that on, spin it a little bit. I got the new the bolt lubricated with clean engine oil. Put that guy in. I'm gonna just hit it with the impact real quick. Now we're gonna torque it. Gonna need the big one. The three quarter snap on tech angle torque wrench. All right, 355 foot pounds, 30 millimeter head on that. There it is. All right, so I went ahead and painted the auxiliary drive cover before we got the, the dampeners and the fan drive and everything in there. And once I get that fan drive in, I'll finish painting up the rest of that there. Um, went ahead and painted the, the dampeners, and they're going to dry, so I'm going to go ahead and put the water pump cover assembly on. Nope, changed my mind. I'm going to go ahead and get the dampeners on first, because I'm not, not sure about the clearance with the dampeners and the, the water pump cover, so I know I didn't take the dampeners off until I had the cover off, so I'm going to put the dampeners on next. No time for the paint to dry. There. So I came up with that solution. Paint's all wet. And well, we're good. It's bolts in it. Torque it down to spec. Alright. 94 foot pounds. Alrighty. Torque these to 52 foot pounds. Ooh, the Milwaukee got them close. Torqued. It's kind of heavy. Josh is in the house. Oh, yeah. Well, that made that a lot easier. Yeah. Hit the easy button, call Josh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's coming right along. Still gotta rebuild the pan drives though. Some bushings and seals in it. He's there, buddy. Oh, thank you, sir. 26 foot pounds on these M8 bolts.
port. All right, so here's what the fan drive looks like. Shaft looks okay, but you know, it's not sealing the grease inside here anymore. I mean, it was getting greased, but we gotta put bushings and seals into this and we're gonna do it to the driven too. I mean, it all takes the same part number bushings and seals for both units. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up real good and then I'll put new bushings and seals on this drive and on the, the driven, which is down here on the floor. But you guys seen me do that before. If not, I'll throw up a card or you guys can watch a video on how to properly rebuild nine liter, very cool fan drive systems. All right, so I got the fan drives rebuilt. They're ready to go on. So you guys have seen me take those on and off, plus you watch me take them off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get all this stuff wrapped back up and then we'll be able to fill it full of coolant and fire this rig up. Okay, well, I got everything back on. You know, you really forget how much crap you really took off until you go to put it back together. And it's this, and then it's that, and then this won't line up, and where's this bolt? And, you know, it can be pretty daunting putting all those pieces back on, but I got everything on, and it's time to start it. All right, kick the key on, let the fuel system prime up a little bit, because I did have that fuel filter off. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna let this thing sit here and run and warm up a little bit and make sure we don't have any leaks. All right, well, it's all warmed up and we ain't got no leaks nowhere. Now I just need to take this thing to the wash bay and get it cleaned up, get all this washed up real good, get the shields washed up. They got oil on them too, so I'll get those cleaned up and get the shields back on and get this thing back in the field. All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you guys stick around and watch uh, the end. I'm going to post all the uh, WyoTech Hall of Fame uh, videos and pictures and stuff, and I think you guys will really dig it. But until next time, keep that green iron moving. All right, thank you, Sean. And congratulations again to everybody. My name is Kyle Morris. I'm the Vice President of Operations, and it's super exciting for me as well. I, I been with Wild Tech also for a while, and I've had a chance to see uh, several of these students from orientation to graduation to Hall of Fame, and, and uh, couldn't be more excited. So it's my privilege right now to introduce Mr. Zeth Key. Zeth Key grew up in Sullivan, Illinois, where he went to Sullivan High School. His interest in working on cars started when he bought his first car, a 1977 Chevy Nova, a car he'd worked on with his dad. In high school, he took automotive technology classes and mentored at a GM Chrysler dealership called HPR Automotive. A WyoTech recruiter came to his class to present about WyoTech, and when he went home enthusiastically telling his parents about WyoTech. That summer, his parents took him out to visit, and he was sold. He graduated high school and decided to work for a year and save up some money, so he and his high school sweetheart, Donea could get married after she graduated from high school and moved to Laramie. They got married at 18 and 19 years old on, it says here, June 3rd. So there's a lot going on. I hope you didn't forget that, so June 3rd anniversary. You got good stuff planned for tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. All right, good. All right, so happy anniversary. Let's give them a round of applause. Thanks. I can't do the math, but that's 17, 17 years that yep. they've been married. So that's very impressive. Congratulations. Together, they learned how to navigate married life 1,200 miles away from home in a small basement apartment in Laramie. 
In June of 2007, Zeth earned an associate degree in automotive technology, chassis fabrication, high performance engines, and business management. He achieved a 4.0 GPA, perfect attendance award, shop leader award, and was recipient of the Outstanding Academic Achievement and Leadership Award. After graduation, Zeth and Donam moved back to Sullivan, Illinois, where he got a job as a service technician at HPR Automotive. He worked there for three years and got his Master ASE certification. After the economy crashed in 2008, he changed career path to better support his wife as she went to college. In June of 2010, he joined Sloan Implement in Atwood, Illinois to start his career working on John Deere Ag Equipment. He quickly fell in love with the Green Iron. I know somebody else in here that fell in love with the Green Iron too. <laughs> people, Jim? After working there for six years and countless training hours, he earned his Master John Deere Service Technician Certificate. In April of 2021, in honor of his best friend, Jake, who'd passed away from cancer, he started a YouTube channel to promote the trades they both loved. He wanted to show the world the technical side of agriculture and what it takes to keep the farmers running and inspire a younger generation to pick up a wrench and start a great career. Zeth said, I never thought it would explode in popularity as it did. In two years, the channel grew to 63,000 subscribers and 8 million views. That's Very right. impressive. So, yes. as, the, as the kids say, smash that like button. Yeah, woo! Hopefully we can get you up to 64,000 by the end of this. <laughs> oh, we're already there. <laughs> 65. All right. <laughs> and side story here. So I was, I was telling Zeth, actually, my, my older brother, I was talking to him last Thanksgiving, and he's telling me about all of these YouTube videos that he watches, and he watches videos about farming and ag equipment, and he's an IT guy that's never been close to a tractor in his life, and I'm like, we are you watching videos about ag equipment and farming? And, you know, we got to talking, and, he, you know, he's telling me, like, it, it's, it's crazy, the technology, it's just so interesting, you get, you get down that rabbit hole, and we start talking about this, and, you know, we knew about Zeph at the time, too, and it turns out, he watches Zeth videos, Zeth's videos all the time, he didn't even know he was a wild tech graduate, so very cool. Back to the story. So Zeth had to teach himself new skills in videography, video editing, and marketing. Through his channel, he can promote John Deere, Sloan Implement, and Wyotech. He's brought technicians into his dealership because of the YouTube videos, and he's had the privilege to inspire people from all over the globe to become ag technicians. When he's not at work, keeping that green iron moving, helping to feed the world, you can find him at home, spending time with his wife and two beautiful children, Zarek and Zaya. Stand up, Zarek and Zaya. Give them <laughs> when we asked Zeth what advice he would give to people entering the trades, this is what he had to say. Be the best student you can possibly be and set high goals. This will help you be develop the correct mindset you need to become successful in the future and add value to yourself. Learn to be resourceful enough to teach yourself. You can't be told how to fix everything. You need the ability to read the theory of operation and understand how the system you're diagnosing works. Apply that knowledge to the correct problem. The quicker you become an independent thinker, the faster you will rise to the top tech position. Understand you will not know everything when you graduate from school. You will need to humble yourself and treat every day as a learning day. Listen to the experienced texts and learn everything you can from them. Develop great working relationships with people. One day it will come full circle to where you are teaching them new things. Take your blinders off. Just because you graduated from the automotive program doesn't mean you can be a diesel tech. Look at me. Learn how to be a great tech and you can apply that to any industry. Zeth Key, the Wild Tech community is honored to invite you into our 2023 Hall of Fame. Woo! Woo! All right. Woo!